MLB The Show 23 is right around the corner. We just saw Jazz Chisholm Jr. get selected as the cover athlete for MLB The Show 23. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm pretty excited. Now, I wanna keep those excitement levels high. So beginning today, we are starting on a brand new series and we're gonna talk about every single club in Major League Baseball and we're gonna build a dream team for every single one of them. And we are gonna go hard on this series. We are creating some of the most beautiful and best card art this community has ever seen. So shout out to my boy, Cal. I will put all of his social medias in the description down below he is an absolute monster so make sure you guys stick around hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single dream team video again we're gonna start with the yankees and go all the way to the i don't know who the last team is gonna be but it should be fun now of course i want you guys to leave your opinions in the comment section down below if i missed anyone or if i chose the wrong player but for me i have to go with yogi berra as my catcher i almost went with thurman munson i could have gone with jorge posada and also i just want to mention some of the players in these dream teams are already in MLB The Show, so not every single one is gonna be a new player. But Yogi Berra, he's a three-time MVP. He won 10 World Series. He was an 18-time All-Star. There are some insane seasons for Yogi Berra. I'd probably go with 1956 when he had 30 home runs while hitting 298. He had a 142 OPS plus. For me, Yogi Berra, I don't mean any disrespect to all the other good catchers and Yankees franchise history, but for me, this was an easy pick. Get him back in the game if he ever... Was he in the game before? I don't remember. Just to warn you guys, before we start talking about first basemen, I did not forget about Lou Gehrig. He's gonna be on my dream team, but he's gonna be my DH. I feel like that's okay. Now, I do have to keep it real with you guys. As I was recording this video, Mark Teixeira came to mind, but I'm still gonna go with Don Mattingly. I think that Mark Teixeira would have been a nice option, but the reason why Don is never that exciting is because they always kind of nerf his attributes even though when he won MVP he had 48 doubles and 35 home runs while hitting 324 that's insane he also had a season with 53 doubles and 31 home runs while hitting 352 I don't understand how one of the best defensive first basemen in baseball isn't getting one of the best cards that we've ever seen honestly if they do his card right it should be 125 contact 110 power with 99 diamond fielding pretty decent speed as well Don Mattingly for me he has to be my first base just ahead of Mark Teixeira because Don, I mean, he was that guy. Donnie Baseball, he was him. Robinson Cano, don't you know? And don't you know he did steroids multiple times and did a balanced breakfast now? I'm gonna keep it brief with Robinson Cano. I do really like this card art, it is beautiful. There are so many seasons to choose from. Of course, he was implemented into MLB The Show 22. So hopefully his rights carry on over to MLB The Show 23. I mean, this guy was one of the most consistent second basemen we've ever seen. I'd probably go with his 2012 season where he had 48 doubles, 33 home runs, and he won a gold glove while hitting 313 and had a 929 OPS. Robinson Cano, a beautiful swing path. His attributes, as we saw in MLB The Show 22, are completely cracked. So for me, he was an easy pick as well, despite what happened off the field. But it seems like MLB The Show was starting to not care about that stuff, considering Brian Roberts, I think that he did steroids allegedly. Let me just say that so I don't get sued. And uh, Robinson Cano, he was put in the game. Jason Giambi, so I think they're cool with it. So from one guy who was caught twice to another, A-Rod, we know that he was caught having a balanced breakfast multiple times in his career, but during his peak, of course, even though it was aided by some breakfast foods, uh, he was one of the best players that we've ever seen. I would love a season in which he had 42 home runs back in 1998 and 46 stolen bases. Now, of course, that was with the Mariners, so that doesn't count. That would be my dream card. But if we're just talking about the Yankees, I have to go with his 2007 season in which he had 31 doubles, 54 home runs. He hit 314. He won the MVP. We know that A-Rod would be... I mean, out the gate, if he was put in day one, he would be the best third baseman in the game from day one up until MLB The Show 24 came out. And I don't think that we have any problems with that because he's probably statistically the greatest third baseman that we've ever seen aside from all the mess that happened. All right, Derek Jeter, we're gonna spend some time on this guy because I don't exactly know how great his card would actually be. So hear me out. Now the season I would go for, just to juice him to the max, I would just completely boost this guy 37 doubles and 24 home runs in 1999 and he hit 349. So by all of those metrics, if you guys did not know, when they're building power in MLB The Show, they also factor in doubles and triples. So a 552 slugging, that's pretty good. In my opinion, when you factor in the 19 stolen bases, uh, he hit 349, he had the power as well. 1999 Derek Jeter could be one of the best offensive, if not the best offensive shortstop that we have ever seen in MLB The Show. 
he would absolutely break the internet if he was put into MLB 23. I don't know if it's going to happen because he's probably really expensive. I would say his rights are up there with Barry Bonds, probably a million plus. But if he did, it would break the internet. Everyone would be buying MLB The Show 23. And for me, 1999 Jeter, even though his defense... It's probably not going to be that great. 75 to 85, that's my range of what they're going to give him. Definitely not diamond, hopefully. Because I know that he won five gold gloves, but let's face it, fan graphs, uh, it's a thing. It's objective to say that he was not the best defender. He probably should have been playing third, and A-Rod should have been the shortstop. But that's a different story for a different day. So I'm going to talk about two players that I've been in MLB The Show the last few years, just because we know what they bring to the table. But I do want to show off this beautiful card art cow. You outdid yourself. This might be my favorite card art of all time. Just the way that the autograph and everything is laid out. We know what Mickey Mantle brings to the table. I think that his card from MLB 22 was the best card in Diamond Dynasty history. A 20-time All-Star. He won seven World Series, which is crazy to me. He's probably in the top five for best baseball players to ever exist in human history up there with Barry Bonds, Ken Griffey Jr., Babe Ruth, Mike Trout, and a couple other guys that you can mention. Uh, speaking of Babe Ruth, obviously, he's got to be on the squad as well. He is going to be my right fielder. So there's a few other positions that we have to talk about. Don't go anywhere. We have a left fielder, a starting pitcher, and a closing pitcher. I feel like we all know who the closing pitcher is going to be. What about my left fielder? Of course, we have to go with Joe DiMaggio. Yes, I'm going to move him from center field to left field. And because of that, I feel like his defense is actually going to get helped out because we know he was not the best athlete in terms of just raw speed but I will say Joe DiMaggio is one of the most consistent hitters in the history of baseball and we know that because he has the record for most amount of games in a row with the base hit that 56 game hitting streak beat the streak it's a thing that MLB does every single year where you can win a million dollars so the fact that Joe DiMaggio was that good and that well known I mean he dated who was that one girl? Marilyn Monroe, I think that they dated. So he was a superstar baseball player, a supreme celebrity off the field as well. For me, if we're going with the best season that we ever got from Joe DiMaggio, 1937, he was 22 years old, 35 doubles, 15 triples, 46 home runs. He hit 346. Or you go with the season in which he hit 381. There's a 352. I mean, Joe DiMaggio was him. There's a 39 home run, 320 batting average, 1948. I just wanted to show off this card art and show off Joe DiMaggio because his rights are fairly expensive. I would have to imagine just like Derek Jeter, just like Babe Ruth. I know that they pay a lot for Babe Ruth. So we should be thankful that Babe is in the game. Although not a lot of people use him because he's slow and his swing is a little bit lethargic in my opinion, but I would love Hall of Famer Joe DiMaggio, three-time MVP in MLB 23. Now, of course, I'm going to go with the Sandman. Mariano Rivera is going to be my closing pitcher, the best relief pitcher that this game has ever seen. That is not up for debate, debate a wall. He almost has a 60 war for his career, even though he was a relief pitcher. That is absolutely insane. If you don't really keep up with baseball stats, that is just mind-blowing. So that is an easy pick. And then last but not least, who is my starting pitcher going to be? Am I going to go with Ron Guidry? Am I going to go with Whitey Ford? Nope, I'm going to go with my guy, CeCe Sabathia. So Roger Clemens, he is going to be in this Dream Team series, but not for the Yankees. I got to go with the 6'6", six 300-pounder, six, 300 300 I mean, CeCe is a future Hall of Famer in my opinion, although... Uh, the 3.74 ERA, I think would be the second or third highest in the Hall of Fame. Regardless, he was a workhorse. He had over 3,000 strikeouts. And for me, I just want to see him in the game. He's going to take up half the screen, but CC, he's jacked now. So we all know he was pitching better because he did so when he was heftier. Not because he couldn't be healthy or lose weight. He just pitched better because of it. So that does it for episode number one. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. We're going to be doing this almost every single day preparing for MLB The Show 23. Again, one more time, I need to shout out my graphic designer, Cal. He's an absolute monster. Thank you so much for working with me. Make sure you guys follow him. All of his links are down below. And I'll catch you in episode two. Let's do the Dodgers.